Black and white photographs are widely accepted as the purest form of photography. A black and white picture presents the viewer with pure image tonality, line, form, shape and texture which is totally free from colour distraction and influence. The black and white print is regarded by many artistic photographers as the ultimate in creative expression. Grey tones on an inkjet printer are made up from an equal mixture of colours. If the ink mixture is not spot on, or your media doesn't match the profile, then you may see a colour shift on your prints. With colour printing, this cast may not be obvious, but when you produce prints with neutral grey tones, any slight shift in colour will be instantly visible. To get around this problem, Epsom has a range of professional printers which incorporate dedicated Ultrachrome K3 grey inks and these eliminate the need to mix colour inks in order to produce the many subtle grey shades. Most digital cameras have a monochrome or black and white setting and this is ok for previewing the scene as grey tones. But when taking photographs, leave your camera set to capturing in full colour, preferably using a raw file format and this will give you far more options at a later stage to control the many shades of grey using your image editing application. You can use most media types for monochrome printing from high gloss through to luster and matte surfaces. I'll be using Epsom archival matte media in this tutorial as it produces excellent detail in both highlight and shadow areas. One problem you may encounter is knowing which is the coated side of the media. A simple way to find out is to wet your fingers and squeeze a corner for a second or two. The side that sticks to your finger is the coated side. But be careful not to touch the printing surface as body oils could prevent the ink from making full contact with the media. So now having taken your photographs in colour, we're going to convert one picture to black and white and I'm using Adobe Lightroom 4 for this. So now we'll just select the picture we want to work with and this is one that we took by the side of the water there and this is a shot I'm going to work on. Okay we can see it's a rather flat looking image so let's go on to the develop mode and I'm going to convert this one to black and white and this is just going to apply a generalized grey tone to the image it's just converted to grayscale but we can further tweak this if we look on the right hand side here we see all the different color filters on there so we could actually use any of these filters to accentuate the various colors so the, it's predominantly yellow on the on the ground so if we look at the color again we can see this yellow ice there so we go back to black and white so we can actually intensify that yellow and almost to the point where we're removing this central um, ice crack which is refrozen over again so I don't quite want it to be like that. A better way to do it is actually to use this little icon here. This is a quick way of adjusting various tones so we click on that and we take the cursor on top of the ice here and then we press our left hand mouse key down and either move it up to lighten or pull it down to darken and I think that's looking about right. The other thing I'm losing now is some of the texture in the snow. If we look at the color picture again we see there's a very slight blue cast in that snow so we can actually work with that. So let's go back to black and white mode again and place our marker back onto this slightly blue snow here and then just click and drag downwards and it's just darkening up you can see. Don't do it too much you don't want it looking too gray and muddy and that's looking okay now. And you can alter the various tones if I want to intensify the blacks a little bit more we can just pull it up and down and you can see the various tones altering. Now Lightroom 4 has got some great features in there but you should be able to do most of these adjustments in your own image editing application whether it's Photoshop or PaintShop Photo Pro, Aperture or whatever you're using. Experiment with the different ways of converting your image to black and white. If you convert it straight to grayscale using just a grayscale mode then you're not going to get the best from your photograph but here we can alter all the various tones on there. Once we've done that we go on to the print menu. Now I've actually got an A3 page set up on here and if we go to the top here we can 
we can alter the margins we can do left margin right margin etc and we can place the image wherever we want so this is a representation of our paper and also the top and the bottom and that's I'm quite happy with that I like a lot white border around this it gives me room to sign the picture or do whatever I want with it now if we go down we're going to use a print resolution I'm using 360 dpi now the Epson printers all have a native resolution of 720 so if you're working multiples of half of 720 360 um, as opposed to maybe using 300 dpi now the temptation is to use 300 dpi but that's not making the best of your printer's capabilities because the printer has a native resolution of 720 dpi so I'm actually going to use 360 dpi now for color management we're going to select a profile and in actual fact I'm going to use archival matte paper but if I wanted another profile I can go on there and select any one of these profiles as the Pro 3800 or 3880 with archival matte paper or we can have photo paper plus glossy etc but it's that one I want so we're going to click OK on there and that actually brings that up in the drop down list and the pr printing intent I'm using relative colorimetric as opposed to perceptual and I'm going to leave the print adjustments set as they are because I've actually altered all the uh, the settings to the way I like them so now having created the correct tonality for the picture we want we need to set up our printer so we go to page setup and this brings up the Epson print dialog panel and we've already got the paper size super a3 source sheet and we're going to the properties and the media type well we're using archival matte paper so we'll select matte archival matte paper and it's important that you do select the correct media type because this will govern the amount of ink that's placed on the paper and also we want to go to the mode and we'll select custom and we'll go down to list and we'll select no color adjustment because Lightroom is actually going to apply the profile for us if we left the color control setting or photo enhanced settings on there then the print will be double profiled so we'll select no color adjustment now if you're familiar with the Epson printer drivers you may be wondering why we didn't select black and white mode here in the mode media settings in fact there is an advanced black and white photo mode if I did select that then we can see down below that our custom profile or no color adjustment option is no longer available it's actually giving me the color controls and if I go into the advanced mode we can see now I can actually apply various black and white settings to the image but I don't particularly want to do that because I've actually controlled all my black and white permutations within Lightroom so we, if we go back to the color mode here now we can go back down here into our custom mode and we can select no color adjustment this means that the Lightroom is actually going to apply the profile that we've selected so next we'll click OK and we'll click OK again now the print is ready to be printed so now we can just click on print one and this has now activated the printer and it's printing we've speeded up the footage for this print handle the print carefully ideally wearing a pair of cotton gloves to prevent finger oil marking the print area let the print dry for at least one hour before storing or mounting 